السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه طيب ريسبكت برذرز اند سيسترز ان شاء الله توداي وي غان ستارت سوره الشعراء اند جاست ويتينغ فور اور برذرز اند سيسترز تو جوين اس ان ذس ميتينغ باذن الله تعالى هاف ا سبيشال مسج ان شاء الله وانس تو هاف اور برذرز ان شاء الله اند سيستر ستارت تو جوين ذا ميتينغ ستارت اميديتلي باذن الله تعالى والله منا منكم صالح الاعمال Uh, as we uh, shall continue, we're going to start in Surah Al-Shu'ara. Uh, and Surah Al-Shu'ara is uh, a special uh, Surah to my heart because it carries a very significant message uh, for the Muslim uh, community, especially in this uh, time that we are experiencing. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to start, inshallah, reciting some of the Surah until I have my participant uh, with me, Bidni Laita. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قاسيم تلك آيات الكتاب المبين لعلك باخع نفسك ألا يكونوا مؤمنين إن نشأ ننزل عليهم من السماء آية فظلت أعناقهم لها خاضعين وما يأتيهم من ذكر من الرحمن محدث إلا كانوا عنه معرضين فقد كذبوا فسيأتيهم أنباء ما كانوا به يستهزئون أولم يروا إلى الأرض كم أنبتنا فيها من كل زوج كريم إن في ذلك لآية وما كان أكثرهم مؤمنين وإن ربك لهو العزيز الرحيم وإذ نادى ربك موسى أن ائت القوم الظالمين قوم فرعون ألا يتخون قال رب إني أخاف أن يكذبون ويضيق صدري ولا ينطلق لساني فأرسل إلى هارون ولهم علي ذنب فأخاف أن يقتلون قال كلا فاذهبا بآياتنا إنا معكم مستمعون فأتيا فرعون فقولا إنا رسول رب العالمين أن أرسل معنا بني إسرائيل قال ألم نربك فينا وليدا ولبثت فينا من عمرك سنين وفعلت فعلتك التي فعلت وأنت من الكافرين قال فعلتها إذا وأنا من الضالين ففررت منكم لم خفتكم فوهب لي ربي حكما وجعلني من المرسلين وتلك نعمة تمنها علي أن عبدت بني إسرائيل قال فرعون وما رب العالمين قال رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما إن كنتم قال لمن حوله ألا تستمعون قال ربكم ورب آبائكم الأولين قال إن رسولكم الذي أرسل إليكم لمجنون قال رب المشرق والمغرب وما بينهما إن كنتم تعقلون قال رب المشرق والمغرب وما بينهما إن كنتم تعقلون قال لئن اتخذت إلها غيري لأجعلنك من المسجونين قال أولو جئتك بشيء مبين 
قال فأت به إن كنت من الصادقين فألقى عصاه فإذا هي ثعبان مبين ونزع يده فإذا هي بيضاء للناظرين قال للملأ حوله إن هذا لساحر عليم يريد أن يخرجكم من أرضكم بسحره فماذا تأمرون قالوا أرجه وأخاه وبعث في المدائن حاشرين يأتوك بكل سحار عليم فجمع السحرة لميقات يوم معلوم وقيل للناس هل أنتم مجتمعون لعلنا نتبع السحرة إن كانوا هم الغالبين فلما جاء السحرة قالوا لفرعون إن لنا لأجرا إن كنا نحن الغالبين قال نعم وإنكم إذا لمن المقربين قال لهم موسى ألقوا ما أنتم ملقون فألقوا حبالهم ويصيهم وقالوا بعزة فرعون إنا لنحن الغالبون فألقى موسى عصاه فإذا هي ثعبا فإذا هي تلقف ما يأفكون فألقي السحرة ساجدين قالوا آمنا برب العالمين رب موسى وهارون صدق الله العظيم جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم اللهم تقبل منا واقبلنا يا رب العالمين اللهم يا ربنا يا حنان يا منان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الطول والإنعام اللهم يا ربنا لك الحمد من السماوات ومن الأرض ومن ما بينهما ومن ما شئت من شيء بعد لك الحمد يا ربنا حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه اللهم يا ربنا لك الحمد أنت ملك السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن لك الحمد أنت نور السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن لك الحمد أنت قيوم السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن لك الحمد يا ربنا أنت ملك السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وخنا واصرف عنا برحمتك يا ربنا شر ما قضيت وصل الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. جزاكم الله خيرا my dear respected brothers and sisters. This is Surah Al-Shu'ar that we have today. Surah Al-Shu'ar, one of the surah it is Makki surah and come to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم at the time of Mecca. The order of this surah in the Mus'haf surah number 26 and the number of verses 227 and remember Surah Al-Shu'ara has uh, you know 80 percent of the verses of Surah Al-Shu'ara is short verses uh, they are short verses this is why this surah have so many uh, so many verses and the number of verses in this surah is so high uh, and it comes in the middle of you know, the, the kind of surah of the Quran, which is called Mi'in. Mi'in is just 100, 100 or less uh, verses. But this surah of Shu'ara has 227 verses because the, because the verses in surah of Shu'ara are very, very short. For what, what is the message of surah of Shu'ara for us? So what is the Shu'ara means? Shu'ara means poets. Poets, the people who design poems, you know, design poetry 
to express and to tell and to send message for the community. At the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the poet, the, the only uh, means that the Arab used to deliver their message and to express their honor and to show proud of their tribes and like, like the media right now, through the poetry and the poem and the poets, all these means, you know, they, they used to act as the media right now media and social media and everything because this is it was the only way that the tribe and the people wanted to say something and to express their pride or to criticize anything in the community they use the poets poetry uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us you know a message through this surah uh, regarding how to deliver the message of islam and like Rasulullah used to take care of this kind of uh, poetry and this kind of means because th that wa was the, the, the way of the Prophet Muhammad to reach people. A way of communication. How to communicate with the community. How to send a professional message to the community so they can accept your idea. They can, they can accept your, you know, uh, your da'wah, your mission. Uh, how to defend yourself professionally through the media and through the poet, poetry. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Muslim Ummah through this uh, surah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you need to learn and to teach your Muslim community, your Muslim Ummah, to use the right message and to communicate with the people professionally. This is something is really, really significant to be successful in your da'wah and your message and today i'm, I'm gonna make this ref reflection in the surah to see how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the verses of surah al-shara uh, told us that you have to care about the message that you use to deliver for the people especially here in america everything is about media if they wanted to magnify something to convince the community and society to do and to act upon it, uh, they use the media, they use the channels, they use social media, they use everything, all these means of communication. So Surah Al-Sha'ara told us, you as Muslim, you need to be in the first line, you need to learn how to be, to be professional, it, you need to know how to deliver the, your message, the message of Islam for the people properly, because you know the media, it will be a very you know strong mean to attack Islam and to spread the stereotype against Muslim, a stereotype against against the Quran and against the Sunnah. So where are your where is where is your effort as Muslim community to make sure that the message of Islam you know approaches uh, people properly and professionally in the right way in the right time. This is what about Shara, about Surah al -Shara. This is long time, 14 centuries ago. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us it is very important for the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim community, to learn the you know all means of communication to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to understand the community, and you have to understand the society, and you have to understand the you know the people that you are talking about, talking to. And you have to carry the right message in the right time. Not, you know, the Quran is the truth and the religion of Islam is the truth. But, you know, you need to, to know how to present this message for people. So this is what is Surah Shu'ara about today, inshallah ta'ala. I just wanted to remind everybody from my participant, and I want you to take my message and spread it and your people around you, inshallah, because HIC, our, uh, our masjid, uh, Hansen Islamic Center is working uh, very hard uh, through this week from Monday to Friday to uh, inform our Muslim community inshallah that we are uh, in the week of fundraising. This is fundraising week for Hansen Islamic Center one, and we are trying to spread the message for my Muslim, our Muslim community inshallah to participate in this fundraising and to uh, tell everybody uh, inshallah if you used to give the donation for our masjid inshallah direct uh, your donation to uh, the masjid through many ways number one the website hansa islam center website they have access 
for different classification to donations to the HIC. So you can visit HIC or Huntsville Islamic Center and you will find this X to donate by the light for yourself. And we, we need to spread this message and I will send a general message inshallah through the email of the community because I know I have just 10 participants. Uh, but uh, inshallah, we need to spread the message through the uh, community inshallah. If somebody wanted to put his check as a donation for uh, HIC, um, HIC has uh, uh, drive through drive through station for uh, for a donation, and some brothers are gonna be waiting every day, inshallah, from Monday to Friday in the masjid from us, uh, 3:30 till uh, 6:30 to receive our brothers to pay in cash to be a check or, or whatever. And through the week and through every time, you can drop your check, inshallah, in the uh, box of the masjid at any time with the light through the five daily prayers. The message is open and alhamdulillah, congratulations. The message now is uh, are opened, alhamdulillah. And you can go uh, to the message, they can participate in the salawat, you can participate in salat al isha you can participate in salat al tarawih And this is a glad tidings, inshallah. But be careful because, you know, uh, this uh, political and economical decision, you know, from the, the Alabama state, you know, Alabama is a Republican uh, state and they are, you know, working with uh, Mr. Uh, President as whatever he wants, you know, regardless of any other issues. They, 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 they see that uh, this is something, you know, know, good for the economy, good for the politics, uh, good for the election, you know, but it's not good for the health of people. And this is something is really serious, you know. Uh, the open the masjid. We are happy that we're gonna come back to the masjid, inshallah. But we're gonna make what is possible, inshallah, to protect ourselves and to protect our Muslim community, inshallah, from any kind of harm or problem that could come because of coronavirus, inshallah. So anybody gonna decide, inshallah, to come to the masjid, just to make sure that you wear your mask, and we're gonna keep the social distancing, uh, inshallah, six feet among us and to stay away, try not to touch in anything, take your rug, your musalliya uh, with you, inshallah, should make sure you're gonna place your uh, your head in the carpet, you don't know. So have some uh, privacy, take care of yourself, have your mask. Uh, if you're sick, if you have any suffering from any problem, problem or disease or uh, any symptoms that you could say you may have it, just stay home to protect yourself and protect other brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala. No children at this point because, you know, children, uh, like the doctor said, uh, you know, if they, if they got the disease, uh, they, if, if they may survive, they may not, you know, if they got the disease, if they have strong, uh, you know, uh, immu immune system, they will be good. But if not, they, they, may, they may be in trouble, especially the children who have, who have problem, previous problem or healthy problem. The elders, our elders do, it is preferred for you, you guys to stay home and you tell our brothers and sister if I have any elders, just to stay home. And inshallah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove this disaster from the uh, world. Be the later, I'm gonna come to the normal life uh, soon, inshallah. Regarding Salat al-Jum'ah, we are working uh, very hard to see how it looks like in the Salat al-Taraweeh and how people will, how much people will, will follow the rules and you know, how, how much the situation gonna be safe for the people. If we have uh, safety and we feel that our Muslim community, they are following the rules, inshallah, we're gonna open for Salat al-Jum'ah by the same rules, inshallah, masks, social distancing, and make the Salah short as much as we can, because we don't wanna hold people in the same area, same room for a long time, just to make sure that we keep our masjid open, inshallah. Until we feel that everything is safe, we're gonna come to the normal life. Uh, in the masjid and normal activity with the Nehdaar. Our brothers in the board, they decided no food, no iftar, because it's very difficult to keep this uh, social distancing uh, during the time of food and, you know, this, the safety of the food itself is not guaranteed. So uh, we're gonna come to this uh, back, inshallah, as we go and as when we feel that everything is safe for our brothers, inshallah. Good? Uh, everything is okay? Tayyip. بارك الله فيك وتقبل الله منا ومنكم صالح الأعمال إن شاء الله سورة الشعراء الله سبحانه وتعالى this started this سورة talking about 
uh, how to deliver a message. Uh, it looks like the Prophet Muhammad uh, when we dealt with Quraysh, the Prophet Muhammad used the Quran. Quran is the best message that you can see for the uh, non-Muslim uh, or, or, the, or the Kuffar, or to reach people in the community through the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not only the Quran, you know, we need some professionality and we need to learn it because it's a, it's, it's a big challenge. It is a challenge to reach people and to understand the, 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 the way of communication and the best way to communicate to people. Now we, we, we live in the, the time when the people, they use the media and social media and the channels to support different you know, ideologies, ideologies and to support different businesses. It is the, the people now, they use the media as a business. It is a business. So the more that you are attractive, the more that you are clear, the, the more you reach people, this is the challenge here. Yeah, so, so this shows the Shara is telling people we need to uh, make sure that we support our religion and our deen uh, through this kind of uh, uh, means of communication. The media, the channels, the social media, all this kind of is, uh, is legitimate means for the Muslim Ummah and you are entitled as a Muslim community to start to use it and to use it properly and to be professional in using it. Okay, uh, this is why I'm studying in my professional communication, uh, you know, PhD, uh, you know, seeking some knowledge in this area just to know how to reach people properly and to carry, you know, professional and clear message for the community. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it uh, in, in our skill, inshallah, and to make it beneficial for the Muslim community with the light ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Shu'ala told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Musa alayhi wa sallam, look at Musa. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave out the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam different examples from the prophets, and he told him, look how beautiful those people reached their people. And they were stubborn, and they were, you know, they, they were kuffar, and they were criminals. And then they refused the, their message. But to look at the professionality, uh, look at the professionality of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their way to reach, to reach their people. And uh, Allah started the first page with the story of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. The story of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Sayyidina Musa, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, go to Pharaoh. You know, Pharaoh was a tyrant and a transgressor and a, a criminal. Uh, and the idea that you're gonna go to deliver the message in front of somebody like this, you need yeah, power in your, in yourself, in your personality. You need power in your words. You need you need river. You need bravery, and you need confidence about yourself. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, what happened with him? Sayyidina Musa, uh, I said, Ya Rab, you sent me to Pharaoh, but I feel that I have a shortage. I have problem. I have an issue. Regarding my tongue. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mission in this surah, Sayyidina Musa is complaining to Allah, saying, Ya Rab, I have a problem in my tongue, and you know, in the Sadri wala lisani. My tongue is not fluent enough, you know, and I need my brother Harun to help me because he is more eloquent. Uh, وَلَهُمْ عَلَيَّ ذَنْبٌ فَأَخَافُ وَيَقْتُلُونَ So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, look at the concern. Allah was teaching our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a prophet. And as teaching the Muslim woman, the Muslim community. That you, when you deliver the message of Allah, you need a kind of power in your words and your message. Do we have power in your, our message? This, this word, this, this surah is very significant to the imams and to the speakers and the, you know the people who work in this da'wah but not only for the imam for every single person who is communicating with people even with your family even with your wife with your husband with your children with anybody in the world this is a way of communication with everybody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it as a general message and everybody can take it from uh, take take from this message from the, the benefits of this surah what is beneficial and what what, what fits in his situation as imam, I need it because I'm communicating with people all the time. As a wife, you need it because you communicate with your husband, with your children all the time. As a husband, you need it because you communicate with your wife and with the community and with your coworkers and with people. So everybody can learn from this surah what, you know, 
uh, applicable with his situation in his daily life affairs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa look at Sayyidina uh, Musa alayhi salam, who is going to Pharaoh when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, go to Pharaoh and ask him, tell him about Allah, invite him to Islam, invite him to monotheism, in, told him to stop killing people, to stop torture Bani Israel, till this, the, this is a very difficult and challenging situation to the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. But subhanallah, uh, Sayyidina Musa immediately, because he realized that the idea to talk to someone like Pharaoh and he's, you know, transgressor and he's, you know, uh, someone like, 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 like Pharaoh and he's hysterically known by his, you know, uh, uh, tyrants, tyranny and his, and his transgression and the persecution, it, it needs some, one very strong, very strong uh, in his power, in his body and his tongue and everything. So immediately he said, Ya Rab, I apologize because my tongue is not fluent enough. Could you please send me my brother Harun? Because I know him. He's very, very eloquent. And I need this kind of eloquence. So number one, to talk, learn how to be eloquent. Eloquency, you know, and fluency in your tongue, and your way, this is something can be learned. Can be learned. Except if somebody have this kind of deficiency in his you know, structure, in his body, in his creation, it's okay. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like said the Musa, he said, I have a problem in my tongue, in my communication. I have a communication problem, Ya Rab. So could, could you please send my brother Harun? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said yes. In Surah Shura, at the end of the Surah, I will give you your brother Harun to be supporter for you. Okay, subhanAllah. And this is the best intercession that happened in the history of a human being. This is the best intercession that happened in the history of the mankind, of mankind. That somebody intercede for his brother to be a prophet. You can intercede for somebody to, you know, uh, to, have, to have a job or to get some money, to get somewhere in any benefits from this dunya. You can intercede, intercession. But to intercede for your brother to be a prophet like you or a messenger, this, this is so much honor and value. Yani, this, this is a very valuable and noble intercession ever. This is the best intercession in the history. That Sayyidina Musa asked Allah to make his brother Harun to be a prophet. Huh? Look, at this, look at this love and good relationship with you know, two brothers. Are we kind of Muslim who have this kind of relationship with each other when we are brothers and sisters you know, in the same family? Do we have good relationship with our brothers and sisters in the same family? To the extent that you love the goodness for your brother, for your brother as you love it for yourself? Do you love for your brother or your sister in the same family to be like you or we have a kind of envy and jealousy and hatred and sometimes problems? Do we have this kind of spirit and, and love in, in our family, in our family life affairs? I'm not, I'm not saying that you're gonna ask for somebody to be a prophet, but you know, I'm, at least do we love the goodness to each other, to be good and to be nice, and in our, in our life affairs, this, our Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is a, is a role model for us in, that, in this one. He said, no, no, I'm not gonna ask you for uh, anything for Harun. I'm just I'm gonna keep this honor for myself. I will keep this, you know, leadership for myself. Uh, Hanur, Harun, this is my brother. He will, you know, uh, give me hard time and he will fight with me. I will keep this for myself. No, no, no. So it's not selfishness. You know, Sayyidina Musa is not selfish. You know, he, he maintained the high rank of generosity and love, you know, and the brotherhood with his brother Harun. And I, I would say in the month of Ramadan, in the month of fasting, in the month of Quran, and as we are Muslims, we need to make sure that we have this kind of relationship in our family members. We, we need to improve it. And if we have some people, they have some mistakes and deficiency and problems, we need to work to fix it. We need to fix our relationship with each other as brothers. As brothers. This is one of the source of our, you know, power and unity and as, as a Muslim woman and after that as a Muslim community. If we, are, if we are not strong as a Muslim family, we're not going to be as strong as a Muslim community. 
So we have to we have to start with the family first, and after that we're gonna have we end up with, uh, having you know a very coherent and cohesive community with the light Arab. So look at the concern of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam when he uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala sent him to talk to Pharaoh. What is the concern of Sayyidina Musa? He said, "Ya Rab, I don't have eloquence. I didn't have eloquence in my time." So number one, eloquence is very important to deliver the message for people, and it could, can be learned, and can be you. The people can be trained to do something like this. Then second, second page, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said to uh, mention for us the conversation that happened between Musa, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, and Pharaoh. Unlike other surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrates in this surah, Surah al-Shu'ara, the conversation that happened and how Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was so precise and see, so, so, so very convincing in his message, in his communication with Pharaoh. The other surah didn't mention the communication that happened between Musa. The, the other surah mentioned the communication that happened between Pharaoh and the magicians. The, you know, the magicians and Pharaoh, uh, the, the Musa and the magicians, you know. But today, in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the communication that happened is specifically between Musa and Pharaoh, and Allah made it very long. The communication and the conversation in a long style, in Surah Al-Shu'ara. So Allah wanted to show us how Sayyidina Musa salam, was so professional and so precise and so, you know, convincing in his communication. So Pharaoh, Pharaoh said to Musa, وَمَا رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Who's your Lord? So Sayyidina Musa uh, السلام, immediately he said, My Lord, رَبُّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا The Lord of the heaven and the earth and whatever in between. If you have certainty about that, yeah, yeah, Pharaoh. Pharaoh started to gather people and, you know, to attack Musa alayhi salam. He said, he said remember, uh, when the people started to come, uh, to be gathered, Around Pharaoh said, Musa alayhi salam immediately said, Rabbukum wa Rabbu abaykum Allah is your, your Lord and the Lord of your fathers. Huh? So Pharaoh started to say, In Rasulakum ladi ursila ilaykum wa bayyukum. Started to communicate with people. You know, Pharaoh started to use his media to affect and influence and to impact the audiences. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam immediately started to work you know, with the people around Pharaoh, and they said to him, رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of the, uh, we, the, the, of the East and the West, and whatever, you know, whatever in this, in this world, if you have mind to think about it. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he kept talking about Allah and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he did not allow Pharaoh to divert or misguide him to go in different area of communication. He kept talking about Allah. Pharaoh started to talk about many things. In one conversation, we are like one you know, paragraph, one passage, one stage of conversation with you know, Sayyidina Musa, Pharaoh started to go here and there and jumping from this area to this area to attack, to attack Musa alayhi salam. But Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam precisely and professionally he kept talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creation of Allah. And this is one of the best, you know, way to debate and to communicate with anybody. Just to focus in one thing and in the, the best thing in your, in your communication side, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam has done. Okay? So Pharaoh started because he, he doesn't have a good argument. But Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he has rich materials that he can provide to convince the audience, which is Allah, the creation of Allah. He's the one who created the heaven and the earth and whatever in between. He's the Lord of the East, the East and the West. He's the Lord of you guys and the Lord of your fathers and your Lord of your grandfathers. So Pharaoh lost, lost the conversation, lost the debate. And he started to, started immediately to threaten Musa alayhi salam physically. He said, no, 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 no. He lost the communication, uh, you know, uh, passage and, and stage. And he started to threaten Musa and saying, I'm going to put you in the jail. I'm going to torture you. Okay. 
Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam that he used to talk in the low and you know easy and comfortable tone. Pharaoh was angry. And this is also one of the things in communication when you debate with some somebody, make sure that you have very good tone and you don't don't get angry. If you got if you get angry, you start to raise your voice, uh, you will lose the debate. You you already lost lost. If you raise your voice and start to be angry and agitated, uh, you, you already lost your your, uh, your, your, uh, your because you will lose your mind. You have don't you don't have good way to think. You know, uh, you don't have good mood to think properly. Uh, you don't know what to say rightly. You're gonna lose a lot of things if you raise your voice. So keep calm, focus. You know, be confident. You know, don't worry about you know the people. How many people in front of you? You are, this is exactly what happened in the conversation with Musa alayhi salam with Pharaoh. Pharaoh at the, opposite, at the other side, he lost, he raised his voice, he got angry, he got angry and he started to threaten Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam that I'm going to put you in, you in the jail and you are going to make you in the, uh, you know, torture you. Uh, this is one of the communication that Rasul alayhi salam, salam, you know, learned uh, from that and subhanAllah, uh, we need to learn this this from Rasulullah sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the same surah the conversation that happened with Sayyidina Ibrahim and with his father and his people. And Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, had the same methodology of communication with his, with, 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 with his father and with the people. Confidence, focus in the issue in the... <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Focus in the conversation, be confident, and talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have a kind of eloquency. This is another side in, in the story of the, the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. The, he started to talk to his father, number one, politely. Another, another thing, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with every story of the Prophet, he added for us different factors and different, you know, uh, ways to improve our communication when we communicate with people. In the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, he kept a kind of leniency, kind of leniency and you know softness with the people and with, with his father. He didn't attack him. And this is what is significant also in communication. If you wanted to convince your children, if you wanted to convince your wife, if you wanted to convince your husband, if you wanted to convince anybody with any idea, make sure that you maintain a link of softness and leniency and love between you and those people do not attack do not criticize if you wanted to convince people with any message don't criticize those people don't say no for anybody when you disagree with somebody do you say i disagree with you no you didn't do this right say you may you may be right, but I, will, I would like to share with you this and that. This will be very easier and maintain a kind of, you know, you are not, you are not going to ignite the spirit of hatred and, you know, fighting in the hearts of people. If you do not, you know, criticize people. This is very important. If you want to convince your child that you, I'm, I'm not going to give you a candy. Okay. Don't say I will never give you a candy. You know, take him in a very indirect conversation just to, you know, make sure that, you know, tell him that this is not healthy for your, for your body. And, you know, I will give you, tell him, I will give you candy, inshallah, you will enjoy it. But I want to tell you, this is not healthy, you know, if you eat it too much from it. Don't, don't ignite the spirit of, you know, attack and fighting with, with, with a child. And also, if you disagree with, with, with anybody, don't say no, don't say I disagree with you explicitly. I, you know, you have to maintain this, this the spirit of brotherhood if you want anybody in the world to accept your message. And this is exactly what happened with Sayyidina, uh, uh, Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sayyidina Musa, Allah said to him, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنًا Tell him very soft and lenient kind of talk. And Sayyidina Ibrahim, he said to his father, Ya Abati, my father, please. You guys, I don't believe in your gods, you know. But Sayyidina Ibrahim said, I believe in the only one God because the idols has no way to benefit you, has no way to, uh, you know, has no way to, to, to harm you. 
and this is the logo. You know, the uh, Aristotle ab appeals uh, of communication, logo and pathos, logos and pathos and ethos. And if you find the, you know, the logos, the logic, he uses the logic. And Sidna Ibrahim alayhi salam was so proficient in uses in uses in using the, the 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 logos and the logic in his conversation. Hey, you guys, you are worshiping idols. My father, you are manufacturing idols and sell it to people. I want to ask you a question, please. Do you think that these idols can benefit you? Do you think that this idol can harm can can harm you? My father. This is not correct, and you understand that this is this is something is really crazy, you know. And I, what I believe in, I believe in Allah, the one who created me, and the one who guides me, and the one who you know gives me food and drink, and the one if I got sick, he will cure me, and the one he gives me life and death. This is Allah Rabbu Samawati Wal Ard. This is the conversation of Sayyidina uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So logos. Logic in your appeal to communicate to people, make sure, especially here in America, this is really, really important to use logos and we learn to do it. We have so many ways to convince people through logic regarding the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the naidi of Islam. A lot of people they have doubt and suspicion and accusation about Islam itself and about the Quran. And we, we really, really wanted to use this kind of logic to convince those people. Because sometimes when you use the Quranic verses to conv convince people, especially from non-Muslim, they don't believe in you because they already don't believe in the Quran. But if we use the logic and, and if we learned how the scholars use the Quran, <clears throat> use the logic and the miracles and scientific facts and scientific discoveries and the studies to convince people about the idea of Islam, this is something also really appreciated and welcome from the Muslim to use to talk about the Islam and the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And Sayyidina uh, Nuh alayhi salam, <clears throat> uh, he used something also, the, the story of the Prophet Nuh. So when we mentioned the story of the Prophet Musa, the story of the Prophet Ibrahim, and now we're talking to the story of the Prophet Nuh, Hud, Salih, Lot, Shu'aib. Five prophets, they used the same methodology, you know, together, and Allah repeated the same methodology in their communication with their people five times. How many, how many verses? One, two, three. Three verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with these three verses, five stories in the in Surah Al-Shu'ara. Uh, إني لكم رسول أمين فاتقوا الله وأطيعون وما أسألكم عليه أجرا إن أجري إلا على رب العالمين. These three verses, what does it mean? Allah سبحانه وتعالى said, I am the prophet would go to the people and say, I am an honest prophet for you, and listen to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and obey him. I'm not asking you for any money or any reward about that. My reward is only about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what the scholar understood from this, these three verses has been, have been repeated five, you know, five times in Surah Al-Shu'ara. This is why uh, memorizing Surah Al-Shu'ara is so easy. Why? Because many verses are repeated already. Just you organize it in your mind and it will come to your heart immediately because with every story from the stories of the Prophet, these verses are repeated. And you can you can memorize it very easy, especially for brothers and sisters who, uh, you know, uh, the Arabic speaker who are Arabic speaker, the Arabic speakers they can memorize Surah Al-Shaara nicely and easily because the verses are repeated many times. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did this repetition to teach us, you know, how the prophets used to demonstrate their, uh, the, the the message and the communication with their people. So what we can learn from this, from this uh, repetition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Shu'ara. So this is verse number 108, verse number 109, verse number 110. Okay, you will find these three verses are repeated with five prophets in Surah Al-Shu'ara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to emphasize three meanings. Number one, 
credibility. Credibility. Honesty and credibility, this is something is really, really important and significant in communication with people. And now, uh, for, for anybody who wanted to convince people, you have to show people uh, how credible you are. You tell people, if, if you are talking about medicine, you have to be a doctor, you have, you have to be, you know, have history of working in medicine field and you have this kind of research and you have this kind of this and that. If you are a politician, you have to show people when you communicate with them that you are, you have experience in that, how much, how many years. If you are applying for a job, you, you have to show in this, in your CV, the, your credibility, you know, how much, how, how, how much experience you have in this field and how, how much knowledge you have about it. This is something is really significant to convince people in any area of your life. So here is, here is what the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have done with their people. They started to demonstrate their honesty and their credibility in this message and show them some evidences about that. So number one, credibility. Number two, uh, uh, the, the, to, to be honest and to have a history of you know clear and pure history away from any kind of crimes or you know you call it background clear background clear background you don't have any problem with the community look at the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his background uh, in in dealing with the community was crystal clear and everybody was calling him as sadiq al amin he's the truthful and he's the honest is one of the way to, to be successful in delivering your message and convincing people you have a clear and and you know bright history of dealing with those people this will help you help people to catch and to grab your message and to take it you know immediately number uh number three they are they are, they are, they are not looking for uh you know personal benefits when you a lot of people when they communicate and uh, with people or marketing for any business or any message you should not you know let people know that you are you that you are looking for personal benefits because if you are looking for personal benefit the people are going to listen are not going to listen to you make sure that people see a kind of sincerity and honesty in your message you guys i'm delivering this message for you just because i want you to be saved I want to be to act properly. I want to be better Muslim. I want to to be, you know, took the benefits of this. But for me, I'm not looking for any benefits. And this is exactly. So, in credibility, honesty, clear background, experience, and you know, no personal benefits. A lot of people they are working, looking for, you know, they take it as business and personal benefits. Uh, this is, in Islam is not something you know recommended at all. So the people they have to see kind of sincerity. All this involved in the message of uh, Surah Al-Shu'ara. We see this in the, with the Prophet Nuh. We see this in the Prophet uh, uh, Hud We see this in the Prophet Salih alayhi salam. We see this in the Prophet uh, Lot alayhi salam and the Prophet Shaib alayhi salam. And another thing, every Prophet he is focusing in the thing that the audience and the community in, in, in need for. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, the people have a kind of stubbornness and you have, you don't want to listen. You know, to Sayyidina Musa alayhi, Sayyidina Anuh alayhi salam, he started to talk about you guys, better for you to have this kind of, uh, you know, to relieve this kind of stubbornness from your hearts and your mind and don't be tough and think about Allah Think about it, and, and he started to invite people because they have problem regarding the fruits and the plants, and he started to tell them, for ask Allah for forgiveness, and Allah will send the rain for you, and you will you will eat and you will drink, and you will find this kind of you know uh, prosperity in your life. You come to Allah. This is, so Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam he he talked about the things that really really needed from his community. And this is a good thing too. If you are imam, if you are a speaker, if you are talking about somebody, focus in the thing that he's he really needs. She really needs. Don't don't distract yourself in in, in different in different places. Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. The people were very you know uh, tough people, and they used to use their power to transgress 
among each other. So Sayyidina uh, Hud alayhi salam, he told them, you guys, you have to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more power. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more powerful than you. And you have to listen to Allah. You have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think that you, you got this power from yourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more power than you and he can destroy you in a second. And this is exactly what happened with them. With them. They didn't live, believe in Sayyidina uh, Hud alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them by the wind, you know. And Sayyidina Thamud alayhi salam, he come to the people, Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam, he come to the people of Thamud and they used to uh, have the same problem, have the stubbornness, have stubbornness regarding, the, you know, uh, they doesn't believe in the unseen and they have, you know, they talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't believe in ab about that. And they ask for a miracle and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the pregnant camel for them and they didn't believe in the physical, in the physical, you know, camel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. Sayyidina Shu'aib, he talked about the, with his community, they used to cheat in weighing and measuring stuff. So he used the same problem, he discussed the same problem that his community is suffering from. His community is suffering from. Sayyidina Lot alayhi salam, his community has a problem with homosexuality. He comes to discuss the same problem. What I'm trying to say, that every prophet, he used the, 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 the message content, which is properly, you know, fit and needed the, the, the demands of his community. If your community is suffering from a certain problems, do not sing somewhere else. You have to focus in the problems of the, that your community is suffering from. And this is, you know, for, for the people, especially we're talking about, that our community now is suffering from a lot of things here in America. This, you know, this, this kind of issues is different from the issues that the community is suffering from in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, or somewhere else. So as a speaker or as an imam or a da'iyah, when you use the, the message of Allah, you have to focus in the problem that the community is suffering from in the same area, in the same place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the surah uh, Ashwara, he concluded this surah to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, make sure that you are not lying and use the right message. Don't mislead and misguide people. Look at the media right now. The media lying and misleading and spreading your stereotype and you, you do not have, you, you don't have mihaniya or professionality. They are not professional. You're using any kind of lying just to collect money and to grab views and news, you know, to have so many views, they can make any kind of, you know, uh, lying or misguidance for people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya Muhammad, if you're gonna use the media for your message, you have to be honest and you have to have a true and correct message for the community. Don't misguide people. Uh, remember that the shu'ara, most of them, most of the people who use the media are liars, looking for business, looking for, you know, personal benefits, looking for, you know, uh, misguiding to misguide people and spread rumors, spread stereotypes. Don't use your media like this as a Muslim media. The Muslim media should be honest, credible, professional, and use it for the sake of Allah, for the benefits of the community, and for spreading the manners in the community. Uh, all the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Shara, the media, most of them are They go everywhere and take any kind of news to spread it without verification. But for you, Ya Muhammad, and for the Muslim Ummah, you have to verify, you have to use the right message, you should not misguide the community, you should not lie, you should not use it for your own personal benefits at the expense of the benefits of the community. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ This is happening with the media and the poets, except with those people who have belief and they have righteous you know, attitude and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they remember the name of Allah, you use the good thing, the right message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything according to the Quran and the Sunnah, according to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And But the people who are transgressed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatened and, and warned them at the end of Surah Al-Shu'ara that anybody has said any word to misguide the community or to spread rumor or to, you know, spread any stereotype 
or show any kind of racism or discrimination against the community, he will find this recorded with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sayyalamu ladhina zalamu ayya munqalabin yanqalibun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that every single person is seeing word in the media, in the, the books, in the, the writing, his writings, in the social media, in his posts, in sharing anything with the community as a way of communication with people. And he's lying or you know, using the harassment or discrimination or anything. This will be severely and seriously punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to Surah Al-Shu'ara. And this is a message that I wanted to share with you, inshallah, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Hans of the Muslim community and everywhere. Jazakumullah khairan taqabbalah minna minkum salih al-a'mal. May Allah bless you. May Allah accept our deeds. Don't forget to spread the message of fundraising for HIC. This is the annual fundraising and this is the only fundraising that we are doing for our masjid. This masjid is running through the, you know, uh, the donation of our uh, beloved community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Spread the message. Send message for your friends, and this is the week from Monday to uh, Friday, inshallah. HIC, Hans of Islamic Center, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, trying to collect this donation to support our masjid, ta'ala, and to keep this masjid running. This money is a non profit organization and running by and runs by the donation of the Muslim community in the local area. In the local area, we are entitled to support and to help uh, our masjid, bidnillah, and this is the best jihad. The best sacrifice, the best donation, the best you know charity that you can give for the sake of Allah to support the religion of Allah, the message of Allah to keep it open for the Muslim Ummah to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This will be uh, in your hasanat, be Allah Taala. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Min bana lillahi masjidan walau kamifha siqatin." If you build a masjid or participate in maintaining a masjid, even this masjid like a nest, you know, of a small bird, yeah, Allah will build one a, a beautiful house for you in the Jannah. How much, you know, how, how wonderful that, what a wonderful reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this. Spread the message and, you know, support the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will make this in your hasanat and you will find this a blessing in your family, in your job, in your money, in your health, in your wealth. And this is exactly what we need to force and, to, you know, help our brother to pay attention for this kind of reward and this kind of benefits for their akhirah before their, for their dunya and their akhirah bin illahi. بإذن الله تعالى خب الله منا منكم الله من فعنا بالقرآن اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا ورزقنا تلاوته وأنا الليل وأطراف النهار على الوجه الذي يرضيك عنا وصل لهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Do you have any question brothers and sisters regarding anything? Any, any, any question from the, our, our beloved participants? If you need any question, just unmute yourself and go ahead. Everything is okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.